Northwest Scotland is classic ground for geology, not just for inspiring understanding of fundamental geological processes and formations, but also for training generations of geologists from all over the world. They come because the rock sequences are really distinctive and the landscapes which display the geology are spectacular. And the major attraction is the Ascent District. But it's not just about getting on the ground. The maps created by the famous geologists who originally surveyed the land have been the basis of classroom exercises in the interpretation of geological maps and the structure they display. They've been important for almost as long as geology has been taught in schools and universities. My name's Rob Butler and I'd like to share with you one of my favourite maps. It's this one here, the special sheet to the Ascent District. It's a thing of great beauty. Wonderful bold colours with staggering detail. There's a map and key plus cross sections and a stratigraphic section, all laid out clearly. This map comes from northwest Scotland and it's part of the Moyne Thrust Belt. So the cross sections show wonderful structural geometries. The geology on the map was first surveyed starting around 1885 by a group of talented geologists led by Ben Peach and John Horn. And this map was first published in 1923. And it quickly became a mainstay of teaching and map interpretation in geology departments across the UK and beyond. And it was reprinted repeatedly right through the 20th century. So this is a reprint from the later part of the 1980s. And this is an original from 1923. And the colours are still really vibrant. We can see it's an old map. There's no national grid, which only became used after the Second World War. Well, following the publication in 1923, this map has been republished many times through the 20th century, with no modification of the map itself. The only changes have been the incorporation of the national grid on the base map, and slight changes to the key and stratigraphic column because of the discovery of fossils that has changed through these various editions of the map. So let's explore it together. Let's look at this detail. These are the Archean gneisses of the Lewis embasement and its mafic intrusions, the scary dyke swarm, the green stripes. And they're truncated by these purple rocks. These are the Torridon group sandstones. And the contacts and unconformity that we can follow through the landscape. The Torridon sandstones form these classic hills of ascent and they're capped by the Cambrian strata. Generations of students have traced out these unconformities on this map quantifying their shapes from the highly irregular form at the base of the Torridon group to the planar unconformity at the base of the Cambrian. Then we reach this area here where sheets of the Lewisian basement have been carried up over the undisturbed succession and we can use the trend of the scary dikes, the green stripes, to infer something about how this thrust sheet was in place. Because out on the undisturbed area we have the trend of the scary dikes in this orientation and we can find them again in the thrust sheet like this. Now if the thrust sheet had moved with a spin then of course the dikes in the thrust sheet would have been spun out of parallelism with those out here to the west. That hasn't happened, so it tells us the thrust sheet has simply been translated in a single direction. We don't know what that is, but it's somewhere like this, without a spin. But look at this detail in here. 
we have the various pieces of the Cambrian strata repeated into this really sort of like comb-like pattern. And if we look at the cross-section, we can see the, how the survey geologist interpreted it as a stack of repetitions on lots of little thrust slices. It's a style that we see on the sections again and again and again. So thrust stacking of sheets of basement gneisses as well as stacking of the Cambrian strata themselves. A lot of really interesting and complicated structural geology. Let's look at the cross sections in a bit more detail. The cross sections show imbrication by steep reverse faults of the Cambrian stratigraphy and low angle thrusts that carry sheets of Lewis embasement and their cover sediments as well. So a range of structural styles on the cross section. Some of the details we may change in modern interpretations, but they're a wonderful example of how to draw cross sections and to show variations in structural style by showing serial sections through a region. This map's great because the interpretations of the original surveyors are shown really clearly in their wonderful cross sections. The map itself wears its interpretation very lightly. There are no great thrust names labelled across the map. You have to look at the key to find their nomenclature, which means that students can build their own interpretations, draw their own cross sections when they come to use this for training purposes. So the map shows fundamental stratigraphic relationships as well as some fairly complicated structural geology. So it's really useful as a training device because students can look at various parts of the map as they gain experience and move from simple areas to more complicated. But there's more to it than that. Let's have a look at the key and we can see there's another component to the geology. So they're igneous rocks too, and they're not associated with the Lewis embasement. We can find them here on the mountain of Canisp. And on the cross section, we can see that they form rather complicated sill structures that intrude both the Torridon rocks and the Cambrian quartzites. But they're more intrusions as well. In this area here, around Inch the Damp, the intrusions form these really wonderful map patterns. And we can see these on the cross section as well, caught up in the thrust structures. So these igneous rocks are intruded before the thrust structures in this area here. And the larger bodies of igneous rocks down here in the southern part of Acid, around Loch Borolan. Now the ground in southern Acid isn't very well exposed. It wasn't very well exposed when the original mapping was done and now it's even worse because it's covered in fairly dense forestry. So the unexposed ground on this map is shown by this mustard colour, which means that we don't really see the relationships very well and they're ambiguous between some of these bodies and the surrounding thrust structures. But up here we can see the contact on the map and you can also see how it's interpreted on the cross section. So from the map pattern we can infer that the igneous rocks were intruded after the deposition of the Cambrian division succession but before at least some of the thrusting. It's a really critical piece of information that allows us to deduce the timing of these thrust structures. So by combining the map the interpreted cross sections and the key, we can deduce a history of the geology for the Asin district. Now, of course, when training students, one of the things we'd like them to be able to do is draw their own cross sections. So many university collections of this map don't have it in this form. They just have the map itself with the sections chopped off. But even in this amputated form, it's still a beautiful map. Well, this map's been important not just for training students, it's also been used to tell geological stories to visitors to the region for decades. 
I remember sitting at the bar of the Cascoo Hotel here um, after a day's field work having a beer and looking at this map which was mounted under glass on one of the barroom tables having just come back from a day's field work at the top of Glen Dew up in here following in the footsteps of Charles Clough whose work is recorded on this wonderful map. And of course this early work underpins the status of this region now as a UNESCO geopark. Well, there's one thing we've slightly glossed over here, which is the history of this map itself. It was published in 1923, but the original mapping started in 1885. Why the delay? Well, to explore that, we're going to need another programme. It's a story that will take us through the history of the production of geological maps in the Northwest Highlands and in their publishing.